Hey, I'm Courtney Waterman, your tutor. Lover of anime, manga, and math. And you just tuned into another session of Tutor Me Senpai. Welcome back, everyone. Today we're jumping into a 10th grade topic, power sets. Now, if you're new to my channel, I'll be putting time codes in for this video in the description box below. So use that to skip ahead to whatever part of the video you think is most interesting. As always, if you have any questions about what we see today or even your own homework, you can always put in the comment box below or visit me on my Facebook page at Tutumi Senpai and tell me all about it there. At the end of this video, I'll be linking my 10th grade playlist in which I cover a lot more topics. So if you're interested in that, make sure you stay tuned. This video is going to have three parts, so leave a like, smash subscribe, and let's get started! So before we jump into our definition of what a power set is, let me first briefly mention two quick things to you. The first is, if you need a refresher on what notation is used and what notation means for your sets, no worries. Check out my earlier video, you can find it right up here. I made one on the basics of sets, especially what's going on inside. Whether you're doing elements, containing, so you have subsets, or even proper subsets. Check out that video if you have any need for a refresher in any of those topics. The second thing that you're going to need to know is that the empty set is going to be a subset of every set. Any set you can possibly think of, the empty set is a subset of that set. And I briefly mentioned an empty set and what it means in that video on set. So please check that out if you need to. All right, now that we got that out of the way, let's jump into our definition of a power set. Now, assuming you have a set A, the notation for a power set is going to be this P of A. So this is the notation for a power set. So if you have a set A, A is a set, the power set is going to be P of A in this fashion. And the elements of a power set are going to be as follows. So assuming X is in P of A, so the X is going to be the elements of P of A, this power set of A, that means that X has to be a subset of A. So if X is in this power set of A, that means X has to be a subset of A. One quick observation that we can see here is that both of these have to be sets. Remember, in my earlier video on sets, we said the only time you're gonna use this subset notation is if both sides are sets. That means X has to be a set in order for it to be a subset of this set here. Therefore, that means that all the elements of a power set have to be sets themselves. And another quick observation is that this right here is the notation for a subset, not a proper subset, but a subset. That lets us know that X can equal the set A. So this subset can in fact be the entire set A. So once again, given a set A, the notation for a power set is gonna be P of A. And every element in that power set, if it's in that power set, it has to be a subset of that original set A. This is gonna be the definition of our power sets. So let's move on to our example so we can see what this looks like. So let's assume that we have this set A here. And the set A is going to be made up of the elements one and two. Those are the only two elements in this set A. Now, we want to find what the power set of this A is. Now remember, the definition of a power set is if X is an element of this power set, X has to be a subset of A. So the very first thing we wanna do is figure out what are all the subsets of A and then throw all of those things, once we find them, into one large set. So let's begin by just listing out some subsets of A. Now, looking at A being one, two, we know that, let's say we have this set X1, right? X1 is going to be the set one. Set one is gonna be a subset of this because this element is also in here. Now, X2 is going to be the set two. Notice these are sets, and this is going to be a subset because this two is in here. Notice X3 is going to be one, two, right? Because these elements are in here, this is also a subset. These are going to be proper subsets, while this is going to be a subset. Okay, now that we've listed out all of these sets, let's figure out what our P 
of A is, what our power set of A is going to be. So we have one large set. We throw in our X1, which was the set one. We throw in our X2, which was the set two. And we throw in our X3, which is gonna be the set one, two. Now, is this everything? Is this the entire power set of A? No, we're actually missing one thing. And remember, before we began, there was two things I mentioned. The first was checking out my earlier video if you get confused on notation. The second was the fact that the empty set is going to be the subset of every possible set out there. So because it's a possible subset of every set, that means it's a subset of this set A. That means we have to include it in our power set. We have to include it here. So instead of finishing right there, we're going to add this empty set as the fourth element of this power set. Now we're complete. We have one, two, three, and four. Let's assume our set A looks like this now. We want to find the power set of this set A. Now we can do the same exact thing. Let's list out all the possible sets. So X1 would be A. X2 is going to be B. X3, C x4, a, b, x5, a, c, x6, b, c, and x7, a, b, c. Now, if you were to try to find any more combinations of A, B, and C, you would be hard pressed to find one. However, there is one more subset that we haven't written here. What is that set? It's going to be our empty set. Remember, we're doing subsets of this set A. The empty set is going to be a subset of every set, including this set A. So you might as well just put that in there. Whether it be last or first, it doesn't really matter. Now that we have all the subsets, Let's put them all into one big set. So this power set of A is going to be the big set. You can start off with your empty set and list out every one of these sets here. So we have the set A, the set B, the set C, the set AB, the set AC, and the set B, C, finally the set A, B, C. And that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. This is going to be our power set for this set A when it is A, B, and C. As you see, as set A gets larger, your power set of A gets even larger. So how do you make sure that you don't miss anything? How do you know that you've captured all possible subsets of this set A? Well, in the next portion of this video, I'm going to give you a very easy way to determine how many elements should be in your power set given any set. So let's say we have the set A and it's the empty set. And we want to find out the power set of this A. We would say that this is going to be the set of all subsets. Well, the only thing that's a subset of this empty set is the empty set itself. So we see whenever your A is the empty set, you only have one element in your power set. But can we think of a way to describe that using the number of elements in our original set A? Well, how many elements are gonna be in A? Well, A is the empty set, so we say that the empty set has zero elements in it, right? Zero elements means that we have one element in our power set A. One element in our power set A. Okay, what if we have another set? Let's say A is going to be our set one, two from before, right? And we want to do our power set of A, and we said that that was gonna be the set one, the set two, doing this really fast, set one, two here, and the set, well, you don't need the set notation here. It's just gonna be our empty set. There are four elements in this power set when we have two elements here. 
So that means that when n equals 2, there is 4 in the power set, right? When n equals 2, when the number of elements in A is 2, there's going to be 4 elements in our power set, all right? And we also did A was A, B, C. So, and we determined that this was going to be, and I'm not going to put everything here, but we did know that on our last example, we had eight possible subsets. So we know that our final count was going to have eight elements in our power set. So when n was three, we determined that eight elements was going to be in our power set. Do you see a possible pattern here? Now, yes, we don't have anything for one, but we can easily find that out. But do you see a pattern here? Well, there's a very easy formula to determine what is going to be the number of elements in our power set. And that's going to be two to the n, where n is the number of elements in your original set. This is going to be the number of elements in our power set. And you can see it play out. Two to the zero power is one. Two to the second power, four. Two to the third power, eight. And like I said, we can always determine what that one is supposed to be. If you only had one element here, you're only going to have two elements in your power set. So assuming A was this one, your set is going to be in your power set and the empty set is going to be in your power set. There's nothing else there. So that means you're going to have two elements in your power set when you have one element in your original set. And two to the first power is two. So two to the n lets you know exactly how many elements, including your empty set, should be in your power set. So this is just gonna be a very easy way just to determine if you've missed anything because the power set can be pretty big and pretty long and it's very easy to miss at least one subset when you're trying to write them all out if you have to. So I hope you were able to follow along with these examples and I hope you now know how you can determine your power sets. However, if you have any questions about what you see today or even your own homework, you can always put in the comment box below or visit my Facebook page at Tunimi Senpai and tell me all about it there. If you hadn't done so already, remember to leave that like. It really helps the channel by letting YouTube know that you found this video helpful. And if you found the video helpful, so can someone else. So leave a like, hit the notification bell, smash the subscribe button, and share this video with a friend. Well, that's all the time I have for today. I'm really hoping to help with your homework, and I'm looking forward to seeing you again next week. I'm Courtney. This is your playlist, and this has been another session of Tutor Me Simpa.